You Season 3 began with Joe and Love moving to a Cali suburb called Madre Linda, or Pretty Mother. Although the doctors had said that their child would be a girl, they had a boy and named him Henry Forty Quinn Goldberg. Love's goal was to protect Henry since she had failed to protect Forty, and Joe's goal was to be a good father and husband for Henry. But problems began right away with their neighbor, Natalie. Joe wanted her, he stalked her, and she wanted him as well, so she invited him over to drink, shut off the cameras, invited him inside, and then they kissed in her book room. Joe stopped it there, but went back to love and thought about Natalie while he was inside her, the first of several times that they both did this over the course of the season. Love and Natalie almost bonded at Sherry's party until Natalie lied to Love. Joe had already told Love that he went over to Natalie's, but Natalie tried to pretend as if he had not. Big mistake. Love found Joe's box of Natalie's stuff and knew that he was obsessed with her. So she then signed a three-year lease for the new bakery shop, and in a moment of rage, she killed Natalie. That leads into part two, the cage. Love told Joe that she had not planned it like some sort of psychopath, so they decided to build a new vault, something that they could use to slow things down and make smart decisions, and it's worth noting that they both secretly hid keys in the vault, highlighting their divide and foreshadowing the eventual showdown. The first victim of the vault was Gil Brigham. Henry came down with measles, then Joe did too. Love was pissed at Joe for having not been vaccinated, but Gil Brigham went to Love's store and apologized to her because he and his wife were anti-vaxxers. So it was actually their children that got Love's child sick. And as a result, Love smashed him over the head. They then locked him in the vault so as to plan out what to do instead of killing him. Joe asked Gil for some dirt. But Gil didn't really have dirt on himself. However, Joe figured out that Gil's son Alan had assaulted a girl named Vicky. And Gil's wife Margaret paid off Vicky's family so that Alan could attend Dartmouth. Gil hadn't known, so he felt like a failure of a father and hung himself. Love then came up with a plan. She planted the axe in the woods and had Joe plant a fake suicide letter so that it looked as if Gil had had an affair with Natalie, killed her, and then killed himself. Well played, psychos. But things began to go south because both Love and Joe began lusting for other people, Theo and Marianne. Theo pursued Love hard. They kissed and eventually they went all the way. Similarly, Joe became infatuated with Marianne, and they eventually kissed when the faulty sprinkler system went off at the library. All you book nerds out there, don't lie. That was pretty hot, but back on track. Although they were not aware of the other's transgressions, they knew they had issues, and Love wanted their relationship to work, so she encouraged Joe to swing with Shelly and Carrie. At first, Love liked it, but then Love realized that Joe was imagining someone else. So she ran downstairs and freaked out, yelling that she had killed Natalie for him. Shelly and Carrie heard her say that, so Carrie tried to run away. But Joe shot him with the gift bow and arrow. And then they were locked in the vault. Hakuna Matata. Carrie tried to shoot the door, but it ricocheted and grazed Shelly's ear. She then tried to graze his leg in return, but instead she straight up shot him and he almost died. But towards the end, Shelly found Love's key. They both got out, they both survived, and they wrote a book, Caged, A Radical Couple's Therapy Technique. Next up, Ryan. Ryan was Marianne's ex, and he was friends with the judge, so he won custody of their child, Juliet. Ryan got a new job, so he was going to move out to New Jersey, and Marianne planned on following them there. But that meant that Joe was going to lose Marianne, and he could not have that. So Joe pushed Ryan off of the parking deck. That was a callback to the stairs from his youth, where he thought about pushing off one of the school bullies, and also thought about pushing his nurse's abusive boyfriend. It was a callback to Joe's very first kill that we know of in adulthood, Elijah. And it was also a callback to the hunt, when Joe pushed Carrie off the ledge. But just like Carrie, Ryan did not die. So Joe ran down, stabbed him, and bounced. Meanwhile, Natalie's husband, Matthew, had never bought into the story that Gil and Natalie had an affair. He suspected Love and Joe. So he had a friend hack into the public camera system with facial recognition software. Long story short, Theo found out that Matthew had his eyes on Love. So Theo told her what his father was doing. And inside the vault, Shelley convinced Love 
to out Matthew on Shelley's popular blog. So Matthew deleted everything, but not before Theo stole some of the camera footage. Theo saw Joe, so he ran to love and warned her, but she betrayed him. Luckily for him, Joe decided to drug Theo and drop him off at the hospital, which allowed Joe time to escape Madrelinda. And Marianne also got lucky. Love realized that Joe had killed Ryan, which meant that Love had killed Natalie for Joe, but Joe had killed for Marianne. And that broke Love. So she put Aconite on the knife, and Joe was paralyzed. Then she texted Marianne to come over so that she could kill her as well. But right as she was about to do it, Marianne's daughter, Juliet, came inside to use the restroom, and Love decided to let them go free. Love told Joe that Marianne made being a single mother look good, and she attempted to do the same by killing Joe. Unfortunately for her, it didn't work out, and the reason is very ironic. Love told Joe that he was poisoned when he grabbed the weapon. In other words, she had put aconite on the knife. However, Joe had already taken some adrenaline because Love's own mother, Dottie, had betrayed her. Dottie betrayed Love by telling Joe that Love had killed her ex-husband, James. Joe had seen Love gardening Wolfsbane, so he put two and two together and realized that Love may try to kill him. And here's the best part. Dottie lost her son, Forty, in season two. Dottie's husband divorced her in season three. And after her drunken fire incident, Love disowned her. So Dottie lost her son, her husband, her daughter, and her grandchild. She was broken. That's why she told Joe that Love had killed her ex. In other words, Love wanted to kill Joe and be a single mother just like Marianne. But Love's own mother was the reason that Joe figured things out, took adrenaline, injected Love with the taste of her own medicine, and killed her. And now, the ending. Joe staged his own death by writing a second fake suicide letter of the season. He also cut off two of his toes and burned the house down, the toes being a callback to the finger that he lost in season two. So, in effect, the authorities now assume that Love killed both Joe and herself. And Joe gave away his child Henry to Marianne's friend Dante. This was huge as it paid off Joe's primary season three character arc. So let's take a step back in order to appreciate it. As a kid, Joe killed his father and his mother placed him into the system. Joe developed abandonment issues, but over time he grew attached to his nurse. She was presumably killed by her abusive boyfriend, which is yet another reason why Joe does what he does to protect those he loves. Joe then snuck into the records room and found out where his mother lived. So he went to her, and she told him that sometimes it's just better to move on. That must have hurt. But now, Joe understood her. Joe realized that it's a parent's job to protect their child, even if that means protecting their child from themselves. So that is why Joe chose to leave Henry with Marianne's friend Dante Ferguson, who had been struggling to adopt a child for years. So win-win for Dante and Henry. But let's not skip over the fact that Joe said that Henry can read the rest of the letter when he is older, but that is between him and Joe. So for better and worse, mostly worse, it appears that Joe may not be done with his son Henry. And last but not least, Joe's new love, Marianne, left town. She turned off her phone and did not leave a forwarding address. Earlier in the season, Marianne had told Joe that she was born in Paris. And on top of that, she told Joe that if she was sure that Ryan could never find them, she would grab Juliet and run to Paris. And last, she told Joe that she was going to fly somewhere. And thus, Joe flew off to Paris in hopes of finding Marianne. The show ended with Joe thinking that he will search the world if he has to, and he will find her. And it's also worth noting that Joe has been sending money to Ellie, so she's out there somewhere as well. Will Joe find them? Let's hope so, or actually, let's hope not. As a fan, it's complicated. You know what I'm saying. Hakuna Matata.